What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of First Blush, which arrives on VOD and on digital February 20, uh, February 2nd, there you go. I'm here talking with the writer, director, and the stars of this new film, Victor, Rachel, Ryan, and Kate. How are you guys this morning? Good. Great. All right. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time. Look at us, the Brady Bunch. Wow. <laughs> Victor, let me start with you since you. You are the mastermind uh, behind this story. You wrote the script. So um, what was the inspiration behind First Blush? What made you want to write about this polyamorous drama? Uh, I just felt like I'd never seen a movie like it. Um, uh, every time you see a three-way relationship in movies, it's usually, I think, uh, kind of over-sexualized or it ends with somebody dead or something. And I've never seen just sort of a straight-up romantic comedy you know, like a classic Hollywood love story with a three-person relationship. So I wanted to make one. For those of you, the actors, Rachel, Ryan, and Kate, um, what drew you to Victor's project? And did you have to shed or dismantle your preconceived notion about polyamorous relationship coming into taking on these roles? I had actually, I'd never heard about uh, polyamory till I got to Los Angeles. And then it seemed like every single person that I met was involved with somebody who was polyamorous or knew somebody was polyamorous. Um, but in terms of the film, I mean, this is the first opportunity that I had to do a uh, romantic comedy or just a comedy uh, in general. Um, so that was fantastic to be able to you know exercise that part of my personality um and it was great to do it within a relationship paradigm that I really had no idea you know about and get to learn about that and and explore it with Kate and Rachel sure uh yeah I was just drawn to the writing I, I was really thrilled with the characters they were all so vastly flawed and I like exploring flawed characters because it feels much more authentic because humans are definitely not perfect. Uh, Nina being far from that. And as far as my preconceived notion or my knowledge of this type of relationship, I knew a number of people who had been in them and I myself don't think I fit it, that doesn't fit me but I was definitely open to exploring it and learning more about it. And Victor, you provided a lot of reading for us in various uh, websites. So it was, it was fun to kind of educate myself. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out what I thought of it when I, when I first mm -hmm. read it with it being a polyamorous story. Um, I think I just like kind of attacked it from a place of truth. I was like, well, what if I was in this position? What if I was attracted to two people? And what is it about Rachel that I'd be attracted to? What is the Ryan that I'd be attracted to? And I just tried to come from it from, I guess, a place of truth. If I was in that situation, how would I respond? Thank you for sharing that. Back to you, Victor, as an independent filmmaker um, making this independent movie. What were some of the challenges that you face in your process of developing and shooting first blush and how did you go around those challenges and obstacles um i just uh paid for it myself like i, just, I basically just saved up for a while and then uh, did it as uh you know on a super low budget with like a really tight-knit crew um so that was definitely challenging at times trying to like you know make a quarter out of the you know two dimes sort of thing mm -hmm. but um it was also really fun and liberating, you know, to like kind of be out there on our own and to do whatever we wanted, you know? Like we use, I think, all of our indie film limitations as opportunities, you know? I feel like when you're forced into a position to sort of make do with what you have and like really get the most out of it, you can find uh, creative solutions to, um, to problems that you know you wouldn't have come up with otherwise you know if you had all the money in the world so um it was always a, a really fun thing to get up every day and to try and figure out how to make a movie that feels like a full movie on a, like a super indie budget on that note as well uh, i think rachel mentioned about some reading sources or reading the materials to prep your actors for the uh, the polyamorous aspect of the drama Talk a bit about those sources. What, what are they? 
I'm trying to remember now. I feel like it was a minute ago. Do you guys remember what I feel like I probably sent you like the ethical slut. Um probably like sent you to like the Reddit, like subreddit, like the polyamory and non-monogamy subreddits. Uh, more than two, I feel like is a website that I probably directed you guys yeah. towards. Yeah. Probably a handful more. I just kind of like grabbed all the stuff I could. <laughs> like kind of threw it to you guys in a big pile. Rachel and Ryan, um, since you played this married couple, uh, Nina and Drew, you know, when couples want to spice things up by bringing in another participant, I'm like, hey, you do you, boo. It's a free country. You know, <laughs> you do you. Uh, but it's clear that at least my impression of Nina and Drew, it seems that they're using this as a, as a quick fix, like a band-aid to what's happening on a deeper level. level. Um, it's kind of like that old saying, like, if you're not okay being by yourself maybe you should not be in a relationship so is it is that a fair assessment of Nina and Drew I never really saw that they were failing hmm. I, I didn't see it as such I just saw it as a new point in their in their individual lives and in their lives as a couple that Nina for sure it felt like something something needed to happen in her life and maybe it didn't necessarily need to be this third person but I think she maybe was changing or evolving or looking for something more and she looked outside of herself and outside of the relationship maybe that was the big flaw um but I I didn't necessarily think that they it was a quick fix I saw it more as like a couple growing and not necessarily knowing what that was mm and being open to kind of exploring that and maybe they jumped in too quickly without clear communication because I think communication is always going to be the thing that either makes or breaks you as a couple um but I think it was more of just like kind of a spontaneous jump that they didn't necessarily think fully ahead of yeah I, I don't think that it was necessarily a quick fix either um I, I think that in order for, for Nina to kind of, you know, lose control and for the relationship between the two of them to inevitably survive, um, this needed to happen. I think that, uh, you know, I mean, I've never been in a polyamorous relationship, but I'm guessing, you know, the same goes for a third person. You have to wait for the right one to kind of come along. And I think at the end of the story, we get the idea that, um, Kate's character is potentially, you know, the one who's going to be able to do that. And I guess time will tell. Maybe there will be a, a sequel <laughs> or, you know, something where we're going to find out if, if they make it. But I do think that it was a, a necessary, you know, step for them. And Kate, some audiences might, mis you know, uh, erroneously or mistakenly misjudge you, uh, Olivia, as you say, your character, as this person who comes into this married couple's life and, uh, but I don't see her that way. I don't see her as an antagonist. Uh, but I'm wondering, in your process of embodying Olivia, what were the things that you did to make sure that she comes across as an equally empathetic, vulnerable individual like Nina and Drew? Um, I think that I kind of tried to play her as, um, you know, she's just trying to figure it out as well. And yeah, probably in the beginning, it was like, oh, how exciting. And this is just like another um you know thing I could add to my list of ways that I lived my life you know and then the more connected that she gets with Nina and Drew the more she sees herself and she's discovering herself and so it's not like what she immediately thought this is all going to turn out to be and she feels like she's being supported and loved and seen for the first time in a way that she hasn't ever before in past relationships um, so yeah, I feel like that's the way that I tried to attack, like attack the character and, um, yeah, just trying to figure herself out, I guess, mm -hmm. like, like me and <laughs> <laughs> You guys are like the reason the movie works because you all get it and you all, you know, get it on a level that I kind of got it when I was writing it, but then you like brought so much of that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Victor's having a moment. I know, I know. It's just like, wow, you guys are so smart and like good at acting. Yeah, you know, like I feel like in the wrong hands um, with the wrong actors, mm -hmm. this could have gone completely sideways, you know. Um, but all, all of them, you know, all, all, th all three of our leads and also like down to our supporting cast brought such 
a specificity and like integrity and humanity to all uh, elements of this, you know? Um, and so much thought went into pulling this kind of trick off, you know, <laughs> and uh, making it fly and making it work um, so that it's not what you think it is on the surface when you first approach the movie. I, I think I, ideally the movie works as kind of like, it hooks you in with this sort of, you think it's gonna be this one kind of story and then it like kind of rope-a-dopes you into this hopefully deeper, more um, uh, painful and, and revealing kind, uh, kind of story. And I think so much of that uh, is made possible because of the performances, uh, because there aren't false notes in there, you know, because every decision that, you know, each of them made over the course of the entire, you know, production was so uh, carefully approached, you know, and it was never like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. Let's go. It was like, all this stuff was talked about exhaustively, <laughs> you know. <laughs> all right. And finally, Victor, so theme wise, uh, what do you hope the audiences would take away from First Blush? What does this movie convey? You know, I feel like if the movie had a theme song, it would probably be like the Different Strokes theme song, you know? <laughs> it's like, whatever works for you, you know? Um, and sometimes it takes uh, a bit of a, a walk to figure out what actually works for you, and you kind of have to go through the fire a little bit. Um, you know, I don't, I didn't want to make a movie that was like polyamory propaganda or something, where it's like, no, this is how you should do a relationship. Uh, it's more like, you could do it this way, you could do it that way. Just, I don't know, figure it out. Try try stuff and see see what works for you. Um, yeah, so yeah, different strokes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. For my fans at home, everybody go check out First Blush, arriving on VOD February 2nd. Uh, Victor, Rachel, Ryan, and Kate, thank you for talking to me and congratulations. Thanks thank so you. Much. Thank you, Rama.